Today on this old house, I'll give you a formula to make stairs easy to climb. We're heating this house from the ground up, radiant floor heating. And these sheets of foam will give us insulation and studs for our foundation wall. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. See this main roof form? We're just going to pull that forward till it's even where this existing deck is. Definitely says mid-century modern. The money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor, and welcome back to this old house here in Brookline, Massachusetts, and to our 1957's mid-century modern home. Now, one of the hallmarks of a modern house is that they have a whole bunch of different levels. And believe it or not, our house is going to end up with eight of them. Let me show them to you. So we are about halfway done with this project. And one of the first things that we did was pour a new foundation for what is going to be an underground garage with some living space above. This is level one. We then cut through the existing foundation. You'll take two steps down into the basement level two and we're going to have a, a little gym in here as well as all the mechanical equipment and then as you come up there'll be a little staircase here we will get into this space and the idea is that there will be a kitchenette an office area even a little play area kevin how are you and then as you tuck back into here we are down to yet another level this is number four and that is going to be a guest bedroom and believe it or not there are still Four more to go. The fifth level right here is going to be a dining room and kitchen, which sort of flip-flops the way the house was originally conceived. And then up to level number six, back in here, we've got a bedroom for the homeowner's daughter. And back in here, we've got the master bedroom as well as the master bathroom. As you come back down to level five, this is all part of the original house. But the addition starts right here, and that takes us up to level seven, which is gonna be a, hey Tommy. Hey Kevin. It's gonna be a sort of family room, living space with a lot of glass right there. And then up here, level number eight. This is a sort of a loft area, maybe a seating area, a reading nook, we're not quite sure yet. But Tommy, when we've got all these different levels, every one of them needs a staircase, a lot of different rises, a lot of different runs. Right. A lot of work. <laughs> And every single one of those stairs have to have the exact same height of riser in every one. They could vary, all five of them can vary slightly, but each run has to have the exact same number of riser. So when I'm thinking about building stairs, or when you're thinking about yeah. building stairs, what are the two or three things that you sort of have to get right? Well, you have to get the riser height correct. That's our step up from one step to the next, the yep. riser. That's right. And you have to think about that being a comfortable step, mm -hmm. step up. So seven and a half is the magic number that you try to get to. Yeah. All right. Under eight, over seven is always comfortable. Right. So that's a good sight. And they can't vary that much between step to step. They can vary a little bit, but. Well, you take one run of stairs right here. If the riser height changes, and not each one, but a total of three eighths of an inch or more, technically that stairway is illegal. So we need a level of precision and comfort in terms of the height. And then the step itself, the tread where we put our foot. Well, you figure that at an average about 10 inches, 10 and a half. So if you take two steps on a riser, you want to be around 26 to 27 inches is the right number to be yeah. at. Okay. Okay. But when you're figuring out stairs, you have to calculate the height from point A to point B. First floor to second floor. For you example. have to think about what finishes are going to be on this floor and what finishes are going to be on that. Floor. Hardwoods here that are three quarters of an inch, tile there that's half right. an inch. So let's take a, a, a situation like this right here. If I'm going to measure from this floor to that floor. I know that the finished floor, whatever's gonna go on that floor, is gonna go on this floor. Yeah. So the thickness is exactly the same. So now I can actually take my measurement and I can go from rough to rough. 69 and a quarter. And that, you know, if I put finished floor on the bottom, it'll be 69 and a quarter. Gotcha. Okay, so I've just added that in. Over here, I have one last stringer to cut. The important thing is once you calculate the height for the riser and the height for the tread, I take my framing square and I put those two dimensions on my framing square. Rise, right? run. Correct. And it's 7 11 16 goes right here with the edge of that yeah. and nine and a half 
for this tread. You lock it in there, this is set up, and you can do it for every stringer, every step. Right, they have all kinds of little attachments yeah. that you can put here. I like a long straight edge in case I run it along the edge, and maybe there's a knot, and I, those, little, those little tabs would fall in that notch. Okay. So now I have a straight run, I go up here like that, and I mark them all off, yeah. all right? Once I've cut my first one, I then mark it, I'm gonna just mark it, I just go template. So instead of going back to this for stringers two, three, and four, you go back to the template, lay it out, and use that. Right, because if I laid each stringer out with my framing square, I could be off yeah. a sixteenth or an eighth inch okay. on every one of them. Start tight, use a template. Right. All right. You've cut a couple of these already. Yeah, I started cutting it. It's my last one. All right, so I'm gonna cut these if you wanna finish the cut up with the jigsaw. That's it for the stringers. Let's get this one screwed in place. Just lay the bottom right on there. Drop it right down. Perfect. Good there. All right, let's just get let's get this screwed off. And that stairway's done. original foundation of our house is 12 inches of concrete that's both above grade and below grade. During the demolition, a lot of the above grade part was exposed, Tommy. This is going back to living space. We want to button up this house. Right. So you got a plan for insulating it? Yeah, I mean, this 12 inch concrete foundation really transmits the cold right in here. So you want to put a thermal break or an insulation on it. And we're going to use these panels right here that are two and a half inches thick, made of closed cell foam. And on the outside and the inside, there's these capillary channels. So if any moisture should collect, it will run down the wall. There's also a vertical and a horizontal channel for the electrician to run his wires. Mm -hmm. And embedded in the panel are these plastic pieces that run all the way through it. And they act like studs that you can screw your wallboard, plywood, or anything to them. And how do you want to fasten this to the wall? This gets fastened with construction adhesive, and we're going to use a polyurethane. Do you uh, know the R value that we get out of? Is, that's almost like two inches? Inch yes, this is an R10. R10, nice. And you know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you put it against that concrete, you're not going to transmit that cold into the building. I mean, and any break is better than no break when it exactly. comes to the uh, transfer. Yep. Push it onto the wall. Make it level. I think you gotta pick that end up just a hair. Okay, so what I did is I cut this piece right here. I made sure that it lines up with the studs below that are embedded in it. That's gonna set on top this. Then I ripped this piece down and that'll fit in here like that and we'll glue that and line up all the studs all along all along here. We want to just wrap this entire exterior foundation. Right, now we don't want to put this piece in until the electrician gets his wire in, so we'll just lay this here and then we can glue it in place later. Take that dry roll right there, bring it over. Now I cut this piece. Now this is this stuff hasn't been on the wall long at all. We can put it on the wall like that, and keep it up high so it's off the ground. Now I just find out where all my studs are. Again, they'll be 16 on center. Shoot it in with the drywall gun. And there you go. Now this wall is studded, insulated, in this case, already blue board. And we are gonna be doing this all the way around the perimeter. We're doing it around all of the foundation walls that you see will all be insulated, the interior ones and the exterior. Well, that goes fast, huh? Sure does. <laughs> Our 
our homeowners are big fans of radiant heat. And Richard, homeowners choose to put it sometimes just in the bathrooms or maybe underneath the kitchen yeah. floor. In this house, what have they decided to do? Everywhere. Really? Everywhere. The bedrooms are going to have the plywood system with the aluminum on the back side, and that'll be between the subfloor and the finish yep. floor. Down in the basement, we got a wide open basement. We're now going to pour concrete down there in two different levels. One level, we're going to use this grid system with two inches of insulation, holds the tubing in place, then we pour concrete over that. So it's embedded. Right. Another part of the basement is so low that we can't even afford those two inches, so we're going to use another system which is with mesh. Nice. Right? And if that's not enough, we're actually going to do uh, snow melting on the <laughs> driveway coming in and at the front entry to make, because this driveway pitches into the garage. Right. So a plumber's delight. That's right. So. And then inside here, yeah, what's Yeah, we're going to do this. Uh, Kevin Bilo's taking care of uh, the radiant with us. Hey, Kevin. Hello, guys. You're underway, huh? We are. Let me show you what we're working with here today. It's a single panel system, half inch plywood with aluminum on the back and our tubing will go inside this slot here. So warm water comes through the tubing, and because it's actually touching the aluminum in the middle, that heat radiates right, right. out. It usually just come this way. Now it's got this cool accordion system. Accordion meaning? Six panels, which are taped together, and they're staggered for uh, proper install. So let's drop it. Show. So, so this is just to speed your installation? By far. Much quicker this way, Kevin. They key in right there, no problem at all. Mm -hmm. You start to see the pattern of right. where the tubes are going right. to run. Correct, in our turns. So it returns here. Continuous, continuous flow. The tape behind you represents what? <laughs> Built-in cabinets, which we want to keep the heat out of. Right. Okay. So and this is an interesting house, Kevin. There's not one wall that's <laughs> 90 degrees. So you can see here. So Kevin's going to have to figure out a way to just have a couple extra loops in there to fill that space. And dive down here. Right, and then you come all the way to the wall here where there is no cabinets? Right, we're gonna, it'll come here and fill every bit of it right here, and we'll work back serpentine, go all the way to the wall, and finally dive back to the mechanical room. Now, this important step is to add the silicone transfer paste. It does two things. One, it helps to increase transfer. The other is it slows down the expansion noise that might happen from the tube. So this palm nailer is a real time saver. We used to take a rubber mallet and try to beat it in. This thing just puts it in perfectly every time. Nice. Goes uh, down real fast, Isn't that unbelievable? Richard, right? So now, with this, we'll get it under test, and then the hardwood floor can go this way. You can see right where the tubing is, so it's perfect for nailing. Right. And then this one will be done, and now it's on to the living room. We've got right. more to do. But at this speed, you guys will be cranking. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Tommy, we're starting to get a feel for how this whole kitchen's going to be laid out. Uh, I see you've got the tape on here for the islands, right? Yeah, big island. Big island, nice. right? And a big, long counter run. What do you got here? That's a sink. Yeah. There'll be dishwasher over there. Yeah. We have an induction here, gas here. So different fuels. Right, and a refrigerator and cabinetry over here. So big, long uh, counter here, but I think a signature feature are these windows, right? Just a wall of glass, and that sets up a couple of problems and a couple of decisions. Right. We learned that uh, we can't really put your traditional outlets in the wall, because this is all glass. Yeah. So they're going in the counter, going to pop up. Yep. Uh, and then we also know that they've decided that they're going to leave that the range hood exposed. Yeah, they're going to celebrate a nice big range hood here. But the other problem is, is that we can't put any ductwork out to the front of the house. Right. We can't go up straight so you can see it from the roof either. That's because of the Preservation Society not exactly. allowing us to do that? Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the pipe up into the bay and then all the way out back. So what is the calculation for sizing the range hood? It's because it's a gas range, we have to calculate the CFMs off the BTUs of the range. Okay. All right, so that range will make 63,000 BTUs. Big range. All right, so now we have to d divide that by 100. All right, that so gives us 630, 630 cubic yeah. feet a minute. Now we have to think about the pipe that we're going to use. It's an 8 inch round pipe, and every foot of that pipe is one CFM that have to get added to the 630. So up and over, that's a long way. It's 35 feet of pipe. So we're now at six, 65. 65. Okay. okay. 
The other issue is we have to think about elbows. How many elbows are going to be in there? Two. Each elbow is going to add 25 CFM. And what's the thought there, that elbows cause resistance? That's right. So we have two elbows, that's another 50. So now we're 665 plus 50. We're over 700. And so to pull that air through, we're going to install this fan right here in the ductwork down there in that closet. And this fan was rated for 837. Okay. All right, it's more than what we need, but it's better to be more than not enough. So when I look up to this um, joist bay here, Tommy, I can see where the pipe is going. Yeah. But right here, what am I looking at? Is that insulation? Yeah, you're actually looking at a foil phase polyisocyanurate foam that's above the pipe, and that's right. a thermal break. Where does this beast end up? Down here. Inside this room right here, up tight into the rafter bay, that's going to pull the air right down. So we're going to continue straight through, and then there's going to be a register right up there underneath the soffit. All that warm air will come down. Now, it's important to know that you never want to put a vent like that or from a bathroom under a soffit if you have soffit vents right. because that air will get sucked back up into the attic and form mold in your roof cavity. We don't have a vented roof, so we it's okay to go right down. That's right, exactly. Wow, long way to go, huh? Oh, yeah. For a thousand years, people have called Santa Fe, New Mexico home. Over 30 years ago, this old house called Santa Fe home. Well, Richard, both you and I came here in 1989 to celebrate 10 years of being on the air. And then, Norm, 30 years happened. You look pretty good, all things concerned. Oh, you too. <laughs> and look at this house. That looks great. Awesome. I know. It looks really good even today. Didn't look that way when we got here. I mean, that was a classic 1800s, true adobe house. Yep. It needed a lot of work. Now, 30 years later, it's still the same homeowners, right? Yeah, Joanna is here, and she's going to show us around. That's awesome. I remember this beautiful door, Norm. Right. It was part of the original house, and it was very important to preserve it. Hello. Oh, welcome. Oh, good hello. To see you. Nice Roger. to see you. Richard, hello. what a joy. Hello, Good nice to, to see you. you. It is so great to be back here. I'm so glad to see you. It's been a while. Yes. You must love this place. You're still here. We're still here. We still love it. Um, we selected this property mm -hmm. because of the location and because it's about a third of an acre and there was room to expand and do everything that we wanted. We still, still just enjoy it so mm -hmm. much. Have you made any changes in the three decades? A little bit. Let me show you. Great. We'll start in the studio. So welcome back to the studio, which was your workshop. Yeah, I remember You'll, this. Remember this yeah, room? This space. It's still a great space. We, we haven't done a lot in here, just some aesthetics. We've done this beautiful natural plaster that's very, very soft and absorbs the light. And we've done that beautiful stone surround uh, for the fireplace, which is flagstone to match the floors. Beautiful. And of course, you remember the North Light. Yeah, this you, is, you spoke so much about your North Light. Oh, uh, artists have to have North Light, that's it. Now, I seem to recall when we first came here, there was no stone on this floor, it was a concrete slab. Right, and that was my opportunity. I saw that concrete slab and we could introduce PEX tubing, radiant floor heating. You know, back then it was brand new. It was a totally new concept using PEX tubing into the slab. We put it into that blue grid system, snapped it in, covered it over with gypsum concrete, made a nice smooth surface, and we even put it in the walls in the bathroom. How's, how's it work? It's, it's still working beautifully. It's amazing. I mean, for 30 years I've had warm floors to walk on. It's just so comfortable and, 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 and terrific. Well, you know, when we got here, too, you were still using it as a studio and then you cleared it out during the construction process. And I took over your space you as a woodworking shop, yeah. right? And we took the opportunity not only to build your cabinets, but to do some teaching along the way. So I did three different segments and three different shows of making face frames, making doors, and making the actual box for the cabinets. Does this look familiar? Wow, it looks great. You know, it looks like we left yesterday. It's just perfect. Remember, I remember this stainless steel sink. That's still original, still looking that fine. Is. I remember these counters. Remember we went to, what was it, Juarez, Mexico to get this marble. And it's still gorgeous. Is that easy to take care of? It, marble is soft. It takes some maintenance. I keep a light coat of paste wax because it etches easily. Nice job. Yeah. yeah. Looks like original appliances. The stove's still kicking. It's, it still works. It still does a great job. And these cabinets, Norm, they look I know, perfect, they, they timeless. They look, like, look like they just got installed yesterday. You know, and they're very special. These doors were really unique to this kitchen. And they have a very southwestern design. You have the frame that goes all the way around the perimeter. And these corner blocks are unique in that they stick out just a little bit. And then there's a nice molding that goes all the way around and a seam down the center. 
But you know, there were some challenges in putting in these wall cabinets. Back home, there's plenty of studs and wood blocks to screw them to the wall. Yeah. Here, we start with the adobe. Right. So what they do here to solve that problem is they put in pressure-treated blocks called gringo blocks. Right into and the those, adobe. They're embedded into the adobe, yeah. adobe, so I get real good solid fastening there. The other thing that was interesting here is when I first came in and started measuring for the cabinets, this finished plaster had not been applied yet. And I was worried about a space between the face frame and the plaster. And they said, don't worry about it. We'll bring it around and make a perfect fit. And these round corners, there's nothing better than this. They look great. What is this? Is this original? What is this? <laughs> it, it is original. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> of course it works. Wow. <laughs> so you guys remember these beautiful custom doors? Mm -hmm. Sure. And these lead out onto the portal that you built for us. Right. That was an addition. And they framed it up with all new rafters, rough cut boards for the roof, and then on top of the roof, they did a metal standing seam. You know, I remember you had this larger than life general <laughs> contractor, John Wolf. Is he around? Amazing man. He is around, he is here, and he He's wants here. to say hello. <laughs> Senior Lobo? <laughs> Look at this. Hey, there he is. There he is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, <laughs> Norm. Wonderful to, to see, see you again. Great to see you, brother. Richard, nice good to, to see, see you. you. And Joanna. Hey, John. Yes. Oh, nice to see wow, you. Wow, it's just been a few years, but I'm glad you're back. Just a few. Well, I just wanted to remind you that these adobe walls and so forth are all authentic. Jim and Joanna were very clear about us using only adobe on the house. Yeah. So what we have here is the, the, the adobe has provided a wonderful wall mm -hmm. for, for putting in all of Joanna's uh, still lifes and so forth. Nowadays, do you still do true adobe building? We still can get our true adobe, but what's happening is that people have moved on. They've moved on to frame something that's quicker, something that's cheaper. Uh, the labor force is minimal in, with adobe. We're not finding as many people doing adobe as there has been in the past. Adobe has become a, a, a material that we're not asked to build with a, that as much anymore. We will always consider you the master or the god of adobe. <laughs> well, now wait Thanks a minute. For your I'm not going to accept all of that, but I'll accept the handshake awesome. on that one. Thank you. Norm, yeah. absolutely Fine. wonderful to be Thank with you. Thank you. Nice to see you, Norm. Oh, nice, nice to see you. you. John, Hi. thank yes. you for my Adobe walls. Thank oh, you it's a wonderful you. opportunity. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. Weren't they playing 30 years ago here? 30 years? That's quite a good gig. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on This Old House. You might have the drain inside the wall. Here's the trap underneath the sink. Yep. And then the vent continues up through the building and tied back into the vent system. So it's clearly not going to go in There's front of the windows. There's no spot here, Kevin. There's nowhere. It's all windows. It's all structure. We're going to put a snow fence right here. OK. And the idea of that is to hold any snow and ice that forms from sliding off the roof. It pains me to see you put a screw through our newly rubbered waterproof roof. I know it. I know it.